lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. We have to understand that six is the number of man. Man was created on the sixth day of creation. As I've explained many times, what you have in John's Gospel, particularly the opening chapters, is a midrashic parallel to the creation narrative in Genesis, where the creation is paralleled by the new creation. Uh, <clears throat> again, to go through it briefly, and I'm sorry to do so because most of our regular viewers are aware of these things, God walks the earth in the creation in Genesis. He walks the earth in the creation in John. That was Jesus. Small light and the great light in, in the creation in Genesis. Yohanan HaMatbil and Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus and John the Baptist. The small light and the great light in John. The spirit moves on the water and brings forth the creation in Genesis. So the spirit moves on the water and brings forth the new creation in John. Born of water and the spirit. God does a miracle on the third day with water in the creation. So with Cana, these things of which you ask about take place once again on the third day. Um, the fig tree represents the tree of life in Judaism. The eight Saim is represented by a fig tree. So when Jesus tells Nathaniel in John 1, I saw you under the fig tree, he was saying, I saw you from the creation from the foundation of the world, under the tree of life. Every one of us, everybody who's born again, Jesus saw us under the tree of life. John, the new creation narrative, parallels the creation narrative in Genesis. So your question has to be understood within that context. When we get to the wedding of Cana, again, he does it on the third day. Now God begins his first plan for man with a wedding, a marital union of Adam and Eve. God's first plan commenced with matrimony, with uniting Adam and Eve in holy wedlock. That was God's first plan for man. But because of sin and because of Satan and man's wrong choice, it went wrong. Hence, Jesus commences his ministry to redeem as the seed of the woman. From Genesis 3.15, he commences his ministry with a marital union. He begins it at a wedding. This goes back again to the creation narrative in Genesis. We cannot understand John and the story of the new creation unless we understand it in relation midrashically to Genesis. Well, let's go further now, looking at this incredible story where Jesus begins his ministry. There are a number of things that come into play where Jesus begins his ministry at the wedding of Cana. Uh, Cana today is an Arab village, and the biblical Cana may be about a mile north of it. It was devastated by uh, Hezbollah Katusha rockets about a decade ago. It was devastated. Hezbollah had no more problem targeting Arabs than it has targeting Jews. And then have the audacity to say that the Arabs that they killed with their Katusha rockets in Cana should be included in the Arab casualty statistics of the war who the Israelis killed. Unbelievable. Nonetheless, let's understand the story of this wedding. So God begins his first plan at a wedding. And Jesus begins his second plan again at a wedding. That's where it begins that's where his ministry is launched. He comes and he changes water into wine. Why does he do that? On the third day, and again in the creation in Genesis, it was on the third day where God did what he did with the waters. In Hebrew, there's no word for water, only waters. Um, mayim. 
there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Yeshua of Jesus was there. And both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what dost thou have to do with us? My hour has not yet come. Notice he referred to her as woman, as woman. When he spoke to her as being fully human, it was his earthly mother. Yes, mom. Yes, mother. I would have said Ken Imati or something like that in Aramaic, something that would have sounded like Ken Imati. But when she appeals to his deity, she's woman. <laughs> there is no supernatural uh, attributes to the nature of Mary. The Roman Catholic doctrine of one of the Zentissimus Deus, that she was conceived without sin, is absolutely bogus. She herself confessed she needed a savior. All have sinned, all fall short of the glory of God. Nonetheless, she has a role. And his mother said to his servants, whatever he says to you, do it. <laughs> Notice Mary says, don't listen to me, listen to my son. Now there were six stone water pots set there for the Jewish custom of purification, containing 20 or 30 gallons each. That's a fair amount of water. And notice it was there for water of purification, for washing, washing the feet of the wedding guests and things of this nature. And Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. So they lifted them up and filled them to the brim. And he said, draw out some now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it to him. And when the head waiter tasted the water, which had become wine, and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. And the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, every man serves the good wine first. And when the people have drunk freely, then he serves the poorer wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of his signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this he went down to Capernaum, he and his mothers and his brothers and his disciples, and they stayed there a few days. It's a fair walk, but walking distance from Capernaum, go far from the home to Cana. You have these six jokes, six being the number of man and the water turned to wine, born of water and the spirit, the new wine. The new wine is always a figure of the Holy Spirit. He turns that which is of flesh into spirit. Under the law, under the Torah, you can have a washing with the word. But it could not do what the new wine could do. It could only point us to the Messiah and to the need for a Messiah. When the Messiah comes, he gives the spirit. So by turning the water into wine, it is a, is a picture and an illustration of second birth. What happens to man? Six, he takes that which is born of water and turns it into that which is born of spirit. Paralleling a relationship between the old and the new covenant, that which is of water and that which is of wine, that which is of water and that which is of wine. Remember when the Torah was read in Nehemiah, it was by the water gate. You have the water coming from the rock as a sign after the Torah was given. Frequently you see water, living water, also a figure of the Holy Spirit. And the rock that followed them was Christ but it was only the shadow. Once the Messiah comes, once the Messiah comes, the water is turned to wine. Relationship between old covenant and new, flesh and spirit, the old nature and the new one. And it takes place at a wedding because that's where God's first plan for man commenced and it's where his second plan for man commenced. Now this highlights something very important. 
one, the centrality of holy matrimony and family to God's plan. Notice his mother and his family are involved in this. Right from the beginning, salvation was to come to households. Even in the Passover, they had to eat the Passover meal as a family. It's true that truth divides and that families will divide over the truth of the gospel. But it's also true that God loves to save families, parents, siblings, children, wives and husbands, and the centrality of holy matrimony to God's plan for man. The first thing God did for Adam was create Eve. And his first command, the first command God ever gave, was go forth and multiply in my image and likeness. This was interrupted by sin. So because God's first plan was interrupted by sin, the Messiah has to come and repair what we damaged, restore what was destroyed under the influence of Satan. Thus, the importance of the wedding. We might say that there was a kind of a betrothal between Jesus and the church at Cana a kind of a betrothal, is inherently illustrated in the text, although we have to be careful about being dogmatic about that. It does have that connotation. Water to wine, flesh to spirit, old creation to new, old covenant to new covenant, six being the number of man. But it all goes back to Genesis and what went wrong in Genesis with the old creation, and now Jesus is going to put it right in the new creation. Thank you so much for your question. God bless.